One moment. Good evening to everyone. My name is Alex and today we will do a very um, interesting thing. We will watch a lecture. It will be quite a huge lecture. And before we will start, oops, I need to have uh, to check our connection. Yes. It looks like I can hear myself. It is amazing. It is amazing. And before we will start to watch this lecture, I want to remind to you, to everyone, what is purpose of this? Uh, why I decided to watch lectures and sometimes to do this online? If I'm watching this lecture, it doesn't mean that you need to always be with me like uh, from first minutes until the end it doesn't mean this at all if you have like uh, time why not to have fun to try to gain some information uh, to understand a little bit better how this world works like and um, yeah but uh, if it's interesting for you to try to understand the topic today elections in sweden and um, I decided to watch some video, some lecture will be about um, these elections in Sweden and for me it was interesting, uh, relatively new video, re relatively new lecture and this lecture will be 1 hour and 30 minutes, it will be a long lecture, can you imagine? That's why I'm telling to you at the beginning that if you do not have time to watch this, do not watch this. Uh, if it's interesting for you, you can watch this with me or you can type this lecture in future, you can watch this by yourself too. But despite everything, it would be nice if you will support me, you can leave your like, you can leave your comments, it is amazing to feel your support and the channel will maybe grow somehow but to be honest my goal it is not growing channel my gro goal it is try to understand something for myself that's why uh, yes let's go uh, because by itself it will be like already a long live stream we already got this and um, yes Sweden. Why I decided to watch elections in Sweden? Good question. I ask myself because uh, understanding how elections going on in um, developed countries, it is always interesting to look uh, why they have democracy and we do not have. I'm talking about we. I mean. Uh, I mean, why we do not have this in Russia? That's why I'm asking myself, myself questions. Obviously, I know some answers, you know some answers too. But again, on suggestions I will put away, I will try to listen experts who theoretically know answers. But also, I see here already a lot of people. Hello to Emma, hello to Jamie, hello to Thomas. Hello to um, who we have here today, Adrian, Steve, yes, so many people we have today, it is amazing, at least at the beginning we already have amazing company, it is good, and hello to everyone who just joined to our lecture, and yes, Sweden, Sweden, prepare tea, coffee, juice, whatever you like, it will be amazing live stream and it will be a little bit, we need to think sometimes, I need, I'm talking about myself, I need sometimes to think a little bit more in such lectures, we, it's named, they, they helping you to understand the process of democracy. Elections in Sweden, it external and internal security challenges, this uh, uh, live stream they did one year ago it doesn't have so many views but we are here not about the views we are here about more knowledge okay let's go okay good morning on behalf of the representation of the european commission in austria i would like to welcome you to our seminar today and a very special good morning to sweden to our speakers and Catherine junger and Patrick Oxanen. Mm -hmm. As usual, I would also like to thank Miana Tomic 
from the Forum for Journalism and Media for having brought us together here today. As a kind of small warm-up, allow me to give three facts on Sweden from the EU perspective. First, on the 1st of January 2023, Sweden will take over the rotating presidency in the EU Council for six months. Second, Sweden is the third largest EU member state in terms of surface. And third fact, as we speak a lot of renewable energy these days, I would like to point out that with a share of 60% in final energy consumption, Sweden is the EU's front runner when it comes to renewable energy. However, today the topic is not energy, but another very challenging issue, external and internal security. And without further ado, I would like to hand over to Mejana, who will present the topic and the speakers in detail. So again, many thanks to all of you for being with us today, and I wish you an interesting seminar. Yeah, thank you so much, Sabine. Good morning, everybody. And uh, my name is Mirjana Tomic. I'm a former journalist, and now I organize and moderate seminars on current affairs in media, focusing on Europe. Since 2017, FUME, the organization I work for, and the representation of the European Commission in Austria have been organizing background talks on the elections in certain European countries, not necessarily EU, but European. And we always focused on understanding the local context and local perceptions that are often not exactly the same as uh, the facts. Today is no exception. Um, elections in Sweden are important on several levels for Swedes primarily, but also for the rest of Europe. And uh, there are two levels that we would like to uh, address today. One is the radical change in foreign policy, sec uh, uh, in foreign uh, security policy by uh, Sweden applied to join the NATO, which has a wide uh, implication for uh, the rest of Europe and the current situation, and internal uh, its internal challenges with migration, gang wars, and the announced wintered hardships are also important to understand. We have two great speakers. Patrick uh, Oksanen is a journalist and security specialist, and Anne Katrin Junga is university professor and expert on the far right in Northern Europe. I'm not saying that she will only talk about the far right, but that's her specialty. We shall start with Patrick uh, to have first a bigger picture, although maybe it is not a primary concern for the voters, and then we shall ask. Uh, and Catherine to uh, give the specific issues, uh, to explain the uh, issues that uh, matter to, uh, to, uh, to the voters uh, when they go to the, uh, to the polls on the 11th. Uh, let us know, about, uh, Patrick, could you let us know a little bit more about the, ba the debate, which is rather important for Austria, which is a neutral country that preceded the radical change in foreign policy, discussions about policies towards the war in Ukraine and policies towards Russia, and uh, does foreign policy play any role in the elections? For example, uh, I understand that the Social Democrats claimed, uh, it was yesterday or the day before, that Sweden Democrats pose a security and foreign policy threat, uh, that the Defense Minister, Peter Hultqvist, said that... Uh, which Lindsay, if you want to take notes, why not? You can take notes and... Uh, um it would be nice but uh, obviously what she's talking about it is a pretty nice thing that um, i mean like uh, she uh, she's talking paul uh, that uh, she's uh, doing researches and she's trying to understand the elections also not in Europe, not only inside of European Union, European Union, and I believe it is obviously about Russia. Uh, like this, like this lecture they did one year ago, and definitely they were looking for other post-Soviet countries where uh, everything a little bit different. And uh, yeah, because it uh, makes sense in a lot of ways. She called that the opposition party's connections to Putin Russia for, uh, pose a security risk for Sweden. Is it so? And uh, 
please give us a, uh, a broad picture of where is uh, Sweden today when it comes to uh, foreign policy. Patrick, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I guess we will go more into depth perhaps with the Sweden Democrats after Ann Katrin Junger has given her presentation because uh, uh, the far right is, is her specialty. But I have also looked a lot into Sweden Democrats and uh, their Russian connection. But we, let us save that part to, to a bit later. But I'll start with the, the overall picture. And, and if we start from where we are today, I would say that foreign policy is not a big issue in the, in the election debate. That was handled during the spring. So the matters were settled. And that was the change that Sweden changed uh, uh, and applied to NATO. And that was the huge leap that was done. To understand that debate and, and how quickly it went, uh, we must go back in history. And we go back to the Second World War, where uh, Finland was attacked by USSR in 1939. And then in 1944, uh, after the continuation of war, uh, was forced into a relationship with the USSR. And with regards to Finland, Sweden decided to stay outside of NATO in 1949, when the idea of creating a Scandinavian defense union together with Denmark and Norway collapsed. Uh, the fear back then was that if Sweden would join NATO, uh, you will be surprised, Alex, uh, seriously, I don't know who those people are and which parties they represent. I have no idea who they are. Uh, I think that uh, probably they are professors of some universities. Uh, you, yeah, if you have some suggestions with your lectures about... Um, about where I can uh, understand about elections in Sweden. You can give your suggestions on uh, in comments and uh, maybe to send me on email. But uh, yes, obviously that uh, I do not know all all people who is um, representing the Russian political parties too. Obviously because come on, Russia is kind of big country and you can find a lot of professors who is doing lectures too. As a result, I do not know all of them. Compared to Russia, of course, Sweden is a small country, but still I believe there can be a lot of uh, professors or journalists or a lot of uh, experts who is talking about these topics and that's why I believe that it's not surprising sometimes if you're not living in politics, of course, you will not all know everything. I mean, yeah, it's like I do not know a lot of about politics and that's why I do not know a lot of things. Stalin would push Finland into its orbit more forcefully. Uh, and that, just to remind you, you have had the, the, the coup in, in Czechoslovakia in 1948. Uh, the year before. And then during the Cold War, uh, the Sweden's neutrality became a mantra, um, a, a fact in the political life, even though that secretly we belong to the Western Bloc and had secretly military cooperation on, on high level. For example, the Swedish head of Navy had his war placement if Sweden would come into a war then he would be placed in London, for example. Uh, this bringing us back to today and what we saw during the autumn 21 was a Russia uh, increasing its demands on, on um, uh, spheres of influence. And uh, this was, um, uh, for example, expressed the 17th of December when Putin stated that Sweden and Finland belonged to the Russian sphere of influence, stating that Sweden and Finland should not be allowed to exercise with other countries, etc., etc., etc. This uh, message was um, uh, really um, taken into concern, especially in Helsinki. To understand how Sweden ended up in NATO, one must understand that the reaction was more quick and more thorough 
in reaction to Russia in Helsinki. So it was Finland taking the lead in the discussion. And when Sweden started to realize that Finland was serious about joining NATO, and that is really historical, uh, the Swedish debate changed quickly. Up to that moment, uh, there was a minority in parliament wanted to join NATO, but the Sweden Democrats, this far-right party with historical troublesome relationship with Russia, changed their position and said that they wanted to join NATO when Finland did it. And then the Sweden, uh, the Social Democratic Party, the, the government party, also changed. Yeah, I think uh, I think it makes sense because if we will look on the map, we will see that uh, Finland uh, has sharing border with Russia, and uh, obviously that for Sweden, it is uh, like uh, yeah, it is quite important issue. I think it is one of the things which uh, helped for Sweden uh, to change uh, opinion. Before, if it was minorities, right now it is a majority. But uh, let's be honest also, one of the things that uh, population of Sweden and uh, uh, Finland uh, not so big, if I am correct. Yes, let's check population of Sweden. Here we are talking not only about population, for me it like... Uh, but population also means something. Population of Sweden. Oh, wow. Populate. Wow, were well, you not typing? Okay. Population of Sweden. I probably have problems with internet. Wow, it is quite a relatively big country. I mean... Uh, Compared to uh, Finland, it is bigger. No, it is good. Yeah, compared to uh, Finland, uh, Sweden like uh, nearly twice by population. Wow. It is interesting. That's what I was thinking for. Uh, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. Yes, thank you, Pio Robinson. Of course, you know population of Sweden because you are from Sweden. And yes, um, it makes sense. It makes sense. It looks like if there will be war between NATO and Russia, Sweden will not be on the first line. And uh, Finland will be. Looks like this. Uh, and uh, that's why maybe they were looking oh so finland joined but finland was neutral for quite a long period of time yeah uh, interesting this process was uh, uh, pretty quick it took a couple of basically a couple of months uh, from the 24th uh, of, of february um, to, to change this position uh, and after that happened uh, i would argue that the uh, the debate uh, about Sweden joining NATO in Sweden is it's handled, uh, it's no political nerve in it. Of course, you have the left party opposing it, NATO membership, you have also the Green Party opposing membership in NATO, but with less um, energy than the left party. But they, these two parties are together collecting perhaps 12% of the electorate. So I, you have a really huge parliamentary support for Sweden joining NATO. And concerning the, the mentality of Sweden, uh, you will see Sweden join uh, NATO um, um, with, with a wholehearted effort. And, and, uh, and the Swedish trait is trying to be best in class following all the rules and regulations. We see that in, in EU, for example. So that is what you can expect. Yes, as I said before, this lecture was published one year ago. And it's always important to thank you for this question, P. Robinson. You asked, Alex, how old this movie? It is not movie, it is lecture. But yes, it was uh, published one year ago. We can see this and it has 23 hundreds um, views. Yeah, 
one year ago. It's relatively fresh. Uh, it's relatively fresh uh, topic. I mean, uh, because he's um, like one year ago. Of course, a lot of things changed, but uh, I believe here they will show some um, uh, information which, like, yeah, quite will be useful for people who is trying to understand what is happening in Sweden and why they're making such decision and etc etc it is quite uh, interesting yeah expect Sweden to do this is also combined with um, a historical decision to to increase arms spending so now there is a commitment from the whole political all political parties to reach 2% of GDP as soon as possible, as it is uh, said. Uh, then they argue how possible it is to reach it um, in 2025, or it, will it be delayed until 2028? That's the debate right now, but there is a full parliamentarian support for 2% of GDP. That is compared with today's spending, which is around 1.3% of GDP. So you will see also um, a huge increase um, of the defense budget and this is also not controversial in the Swedish debate uh, during this election so that means that we are, are arguing a lot about uh, domestic issues in the uh, debate uh, so that is my short uh, short introduction my short overflight my broad s uh, draws of, of the pencil to paint the picture Thank you very much. Mm, yeah. <laughs> and Catherine, uh, I, would uh, I would like you now to give your broad picture uh, about uh, the issues that really matter to the voters. But I would just to, uh, uh, like to make a very uh, short, uh, let's say, uh, 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 thought. Uh, in 2018, the European Commission, the representation of the European Commission, uh, also, and, and Hume, we also. Uh, had an event on the elections in Sweden with the historian Lars Tregord and journalist uh, Sofia Nerbrun. And uh, we were also... Yes, hello to you, Lisa Marshall. Hello, Lisa Marshall. Happy to see you too. And yes, I see your message, um, uh, Pearl Robinson, that you say that Alex, Alex, uh, so many things happened here, like a lot of new things happened here. Uh, here we have a new government since the fall of 23 new laws and are uh, happy for them so we don't have left to win people i mean yes because i do not know so many things about uh, uh, sweden of course um, for me it is better just to start to watch something obviously to find good lecture online i mean like fresh lectures uh, i didn't find I don't know why, maybe I, yeah, you can help me because you're from Sweden, uh, something interesting to find. Uh, this one, I like that uh, it's easy to understand pronunciation for me and the way how they were talking because I was looking for other lectures. It is, yeah. Anyway, anyway, uh, I think that one here it is relatively good because they're talking about events which were before, and let's listen to the opinion of other experts. Talking about migration, among other things, and they were rather uh, optimistic at the time. They did not deny the problems, but they were, uh, let's say, uh, optimistic that the problems would uh, be solved. In four years, it seems that uh, the situation has worsened, uh, four years ago, we were not speaking about gang wars. We were not speaking about segregation. Uh, just the wording was totally different. And uh, one more thought before I give the screen to uh, Anne Catherine is, when I started preparing this event, uh, I was, uh, 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 I was uh, reading on Swedish radio the main topics. I heard the debates. And it all focused on migration, segregation, integration, criminality. But then, two weeks later, now that the prices of energy are increasing so much, now the uh, economic aspect seems to be uh, uh, as important. 
And I'm also wondering where will all the money come from? I understand there is a big package to save uh, uh, energy companies in Sweden. Where will all this money come from uh, uh, for saving the uh, energy sector, for the military, and uh, you know, to make sure that citizens don't really suffer this winter? Please, Anne Catherine. Thank you, and good morning, everyone, and thank you for being able to, to give this presentation before the Swedish elections. Um, could you start the PowerPoint presentation? I need some help here because it was, this was a new system uh, for me. As to your question, Mirja, um, you are right in that respect that until 10 years ago, um, before the Sweden Democrats starting, the Sweden Democrats made their parliamentary breakthrough in 2010. And then immigration and segregation were not belong not to the main top uh, priorities or concerns among the Swedish voters. That was the case since 2014. Uh, then immigration and segregation have indeed been important issues, both for the voters and for the parties in how they present themselves and for the voters for which parties they vote for. And that explains why the Sweden Democrats during the last elections every time has increased their share of the vote. So there has been a change. I mean, um, Sweden has been a country uh, where kind of socio socioeconomic issues and socio socioeconomic left-right um, policies have been on the top, like employment, the welfare state, the educational system. But during the last 10 years, this has changed. So this is indeed and it has been a concern among an increasing number of, of voters. And as during, since the last election, when you had your last uh, session on, on, on the Swedish political system, the mainstream parties have to a large degree adapted to the Sweden Democrats' framing of which are the main societal problems in the Swedish society, uh, that is kind of immigration, segregation and criminality and law and order. And so these topics have, in that sense, become more, more important, both not only for Sweden democratic voters, but for a large share of the voters, even the social democratic uh, voters, uh, as well as, as the, the conservative and liberal uh, voters. So this is indeed a change in, in the Swedish parliamentary system. Well, I'm just a short, short overview. I'm a political scientist, so I mean, I want to yeah. kind of explain uh, what the system is about. I mean, Sweden is... is yeah, so that's what she said, that she's political scientist. It is one of the reasons why I decided to watch this video, because in future, as I said before, I want to study uh, uh, in program of political science political science and uh, political scientists, they usually do, they observing, usually, they look on big picture, they're not, uh, yeah, and that's, uh, that's what I like, that she's doing right now, like, she, she's trying to show us these, uh, the Swedish parliamentary elections 2024, how it looks like. That's what I like in political science, this side, where you can look on this picture and to use uh, real facts. And uh, yeah, it is quite interesting. Um, um, it has a parliamentary system. It has a proportional uh, yeah. electoral system. Uh, and yes, about proportional uh, electoral system. I think that I was talking before, it probably it was a previous live stream when uh, like example, the USA it is not proportional uh, and like uh, majority. Okay, we are talking about Sweden, and here you can find that if there was elected example, um, some minor parties they all like not majority, not main parties. Uh, small parties, they also will be representative on uh, in, in parliamentary example. And I think it is quite nice to see this system. Yeah, that's a like. Uh, you could change the slide, please, going to the next slide, if possible. Uh, here you can see the nine parties yeah, eight for of the them. eight 
Swedish parties that are represented in the Swedish parliament called the Riksdag. And why nine party leaders? Well, that is because the Green Party has two spokespersons, so they have, in a sense, two um, party leaders. Well, the Swedish par parliamentary political system has traditionally been a, a five-party system consisting of two parties to the left, the Social Democratic Party being the main party, and for a long period it was kind of the, the uh, sole party of, of, of the Swedish governments forming minority governments with, with uh, the left-wing party, or uh, not forming minority governments, but having, being in government with the support, parliamentary support, of either the left-wing party or center and, and other parties. And to the right, uh, we have the Conservative Party, the Liberal Party, uh, Christian Democratic Party, <clears throat> and mm -hmm. now uh, the Sweden Democratic Party became uh, a member of the parliament uh, after in, in 2010. It was formed in 1988. And on the left, of course, you also had the left-wing uh, party. So it's it's it has become a much more complicated party system. Yes, like yeah, I agree with you, uh, Jamie Dreams. Wow, eight parties, and uh, you can see how representative um, Sweden part uh, Sweden um, Parliament is, and it is fascinating. I like this side of uh, I like this system. It is uh, like it doesn't mean that. Uh, uh, it is it is more complicated system and it means decisions usually longer to do because come on i think it is uh, logical that uh, agreements sometimes to like example to pass one law you need much longer time or because not every time there will be unity between parties it looks like this because all these uh, proportional system given chance to many parties to be there. Government formation has become yeah. much more complicated. After the last elections in 2018, it took 134 days to form a government, and that was the longer, longest time in modern, <laughs> modern political history to form a government. The government that was formed was a government by the Social Democratic Party and the Environmental Party. But as they did not control a parliamentary majority by their own, they had an alliance, kind of a, a support parties uh, by uh, with the, the Centre Party and the Liberal Party. That didn't last that long, uh, for uh, two years. And so we have had kind of troubled uh, situation in, in the parliament. And that is kind of the background for these elections because the voters do not only vote for uh, a party they only also made a choice of which government they would like to have and previously the swedish political system has formed kind of a has been like a functional majority system because you have known that there have been block politics so you have known either you have a center right government or a center left government now the these blocks have dissolved and there is, is a much more um, uh, fluid situation and what what is kind of of um, uh, the elephant in the room is of, is naturally the sweden democrats because uh until well the last elections there was a cordon sanitaire uh, around the sweden democrats uh, the parties were reluctant uh, to uh, talk with them, to negotiate with them, uh, to make um, compromises or cooperate with them and to use them as support parties for government formation. This changed rapidly after the last elections when firstly the Christian Democratic Party leader invited the Swedish Democratic Party leader Jimmy Åkesson uh, for lunch and afterwards uh, the party leader of the Conservative Party invited him for lunch. So the isolation is broken. And after that, also, uh, the many of the parties have adapted. I mean, they have moved policy wise closer to the Sweden Democrats on issues like immigration, law and order and segregation. That means more restrictive immigration um, policies, uh, harder punishments for law and order, 
more competencies given to the police and also in order to investigate uh, criminality. And also uh, when it comes to segregation, there are, are discussions on more requirements. You have to know language tests and, and uh, knowledge tests in order to become a Swedish citizen, even to become, e even to, to um, have a, a permanent uh, residence. Per yes, even to have permanent residence in uh, Sweden, you have to have to um, language test. Let's look uh, what kind of language test. Sweden Sweden uh, official language. Uh, we have Swedish. Uh, okay. Language test. Test. Or how to write citizen? Sweden is one of uh, only three EU countries not to have language requirements built into the citizenship process. Uh, Two years residence in Sweden, a person who has lived in Sweden for five years and who can speak and write Swedish can be qualified to obtain citizenship provided there is no criminal history. Okay, I was thinking there will be uh, two languages like as an immigrant to Sweden. So we can see. Yeah, I was thinking there will be two languages because she said this and yes, uh, Pierre Robinson, thank you for your message and I want to read this message. You say that, Alex, we have clearly better management of garbage than what the US has. We sort everything, banana peels, potato, we compost food scraps, paper, plastic, metal cardboards, refrigerators. Wow, you have quite a complicated system. And yes, I didn't get... Thank you for sharing with this, P. Robinson. I want to find out a little bit better about uh, citizenship. What she said. She said two languages, it is requirements. I looked on... Uh, um, in Google, it doesn't look like two years. In Swedish, it is main. Maybe it is important to know for them also la English language. I don't know. Maybe this is what she's talking about. As a politician, maybe you need to know. Obviously, it is. Uh, yeah, like you must know English. Maybe this Our discussions is on more. I mean, they have moved policy-wise closer to the Sweden Democrats on issues like immigration, law and order and segregation. That means more restrictive immigration um, policies, uh, harder punishments for law and order, more competencies given to the police and also in order to investigate uh, criminality. And also uh, when it comes to segregation, there are, are discussions on more requirements. You have to know language tests and, and uh, knowledge test in order to become a Swedish citizen, even to become, even to, to um, have a, a permanent uh, residence permit as an immigrant to Sweden. So we can yeah. see that a lot of parties have adapted to the Sweden Democrats. So this will maybe be the first time, or it is the first time, when you, we have uh, kind of two blocks again, one right wing and one left wing, but there are new parties uh, within them. And the Sweden Democrats are uh, prepared to be a support party uh, to a conservative. Thank you, P. Robinson, Alex. Uh, that is old information. As I said before, we have a new government, so there are new demands on the migrants. Yeah, thank you for sh sharing this. 
in future we will definitely watch uh, because i was thinking if i will take a uh, lecture one year old i mean like uh, of course uh, everything is changing so fast in this fast world uh, obviously um, here we can see that uh, some uh, changes already example requirements for immigrants but it looks like um, they did this process easier for immigrants like um not two languages but one like it is wow it is good uh here in america i think you know everyone knows that you need to live five years uh, and then already you can apply only for i uh, know five years and then you can apply for citizenship and there will be also test in Sweden, we can see you need to have two years and only after two years you can apply, not only, already after two years you can apply for citizenship in Sweden. It is kind of fast. Come on, two years and you can apply. Wow, it is crazy. But again, uh, anyway, requirements on language, it is kind of important stuff. Very, very important. The government, but about all, the, some of the parties are prepared to take over the government with the support of the Sweden Democrats, but they are quite still reluctant to include them fully into the government and give them uh, ministerial portfolios. So that is kind of the background of uh, the situation. Uh, could I have the following uh, slide, please? So here you can see uh, the results uh, from uh, the last uh, elections. And as you see, the, the Social Democratic Party um, was the largest party, followed by the Conservative Party. Okay, if it is old election, I mean, uh, like 2018, let's also look for results of election in uh, last elections in Sweden. And we will compare these elections for by yourself, because it is, believe, uh, quite interesting just to compare um, results. of last elections in Sweden. Uh, we can see example um, what we will use Wikipedia. <laughs> Wikipedia Alex is in Wikipedia. Yeah, I mean, why not? I want to look, to be honest, uh, for something visible for images for our live stream also. Like example, this one, what is it? Ah, it is 2018. Yeah, I was, I saw, look at this interesting uh, photo, which I want to show you right now. Uh, can I show this or not? Uh, yes, look at this photo. I saw this photo before this photo of elections. You can see it is about proportional elections in Sweden. And I was watching video, I uh, like... Um, another lecture I was watching about elections and this photo I saw like how representative Sweden uh, parliament it is and it is the one of the most representative uh, uh, like um, parliament around the world because uh, in the USA you have two major party here it is completely a different system and we can see that uh, minors party despite even if uh, like they if they passed per year or in percentages it means that they can take uh, some seats it wow it is nice but results of elections in sweden um can i see this Uh, 2022 because I want to look at this okay looks like we need to use 
Wikipedia anyway. Yes, obviously we have here some uh, already understanding like uh, 28% we have social democrats. I hope that you can see. It is 100 seats. 62 seats, 17% it is Sweden democrats. And uh, moderate, it is 70 seats. It is like, you can see how diverse. Wow, I like this. Alex, I have a request and that is that you address that you address this topic in three, four months due to new laws coming into force at the turn of the year. I think, yes, it is good uh, to watch anyway. And here we can see even map uh, result of elections. Yeah, uh, these letters can help to understand uh, where which party won elections. Quite interesting, quite interesting. But I believe population of uh, population uh, on north of Sweden less than on south of Sweden because there must be quite. I mean, yeah. Looks like population north less populated. Okay. Yeah, this is good also to see this proportion. Okay, let's go. Party Moderatana, but you see the Sweden Democrats are the third largest, we're the third largest party, and that is the case in many of the uh, Scandinavian and Nordic countries. In Denmark, that was the case before, not anymore, since the Danish People's Party have been imploding. And then you see a number of, of smaller parties in the Swedish political system polling less than 10%, the Center Party, um, and the left-wing party, the Christian Democrats, the liberals, and, and the environmental party. And as I said, the government uh, up to now during uh, the parliamentary period has been a minority government consisting of the Social Democratic Party and the Green Party. And they have then been negotiating majorities within, within the parliament. And obviously there has been uh, discussions that that the governments are too weak. They are too weak to implement large-scale reforms. And there are concerns that that we need kind of, Sweden would need kind of broader and more long-term uh, parliamentary cooperation to undertake some of the reforms that Maria was uh, talking about previously. So could I have the following uh, slide, please? Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked about what, which are the most important questions for the voters and as these have changed and here i have uh, then listed some because they are opinion polls made repeatedly asking uh, the voters which uh, which issues are the most important for them and still in july uh, healthcare was on the top at least by the opinion institute novus it was the most important question for for a lot of voters law and order came second education third and immigration fourth. But then you can ask why healthcare and why education? I won't go in into length. Yeah, about you can see that it was on July four oh, on July twenty twenty two. Um, on July twenty twenty two, for them, for Swedish people, it was important. First, healthcare, law and order. Second. Third, education, and number four already, immigration. Um, wow. It is interesting. And number five, uh, you can see demoscope. It is also the climate change, followed by the economy and the defense. Okay. This, but there has been an ongoing It is already in August. Court at least the last five years about healthcare and uh, particularly education uh, that and education is related to issues of segregation. Sweden introduced in the 90s, uh, 1990s a system of pri private uh, being able to have private uh, healthcare and private education. They are not private in the sense that you 
pay yourself, but this, you can go with your public health care and you pay the same amount of money going to 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 um, use health care and the education is free, but you have enterprises that can run schools, but they are then f uh, paid or they get the money from the municipalities, they get a specific sum for each and every pupil. And since in the educational system, uh, it is these go good good schools are are then some of the private schools, not all, and then middle class uh, parents they make kind of the choices, and you have to choose these schools already when the kids are quite young, almost already when they are born to get the place in these schools. So, it's a question, and of course, it's a question also because uh, it has been very profitable to run these private schools and there is a discussion is should it be possible to uh, make a lot of money and a lot of gains with kind of publicly uh, uh, sponsored and paid with public uh, funding so that has been an issue but it hasn't really been politicized and actually it's a it's a question when where the public is more uh, negative to the present situation but there is no uh, majority in the parliament for changing uh, the system uh, apart from from marginal uh, changes so but law and order are then among the top priorities and if you look at the opinion polls made in august by demoscop and some you see and law and order has climbed up to being the, the top priority and against the background that once again in the summer there is an increasing number of, of gang violence and the gang violence is obviously uh, related to, to drugs and criminal uh, behavior and of course healthcare is still among the top concerns and education as well and immigration and integration in the demoscope you can see that the climate was climb cl had, had been climbing among the con the concerns among the voters we have had a very hot summer and the people um, start talking about, about climate change. it's interesting that she said immigration and integration together because uh, yeah i can understand that it is important also to think about uh integration of people into society uh, programs help which can help people to example to uh, to become part of this society and programs which you can help people to um, be part of, or culturally part of this uh, community and uh, yeah it is uh, it makes sense to be honest like example programs where people will be able to study Swedish language and uh, maybe yeah which can help people to find job in some areas which they want to work and yeah it is uh, it is very important example i'm looking here in houston uh, in america uh you can find a lot of programs for uh immigrants which can help you to study english example as you know i was going by myself for during half year to study english a second language and you can find a lot a lot of such programs which can help you to improve your understanding of english and yes here same situation uh, here we are in sweden they're talking about integration not only just immigration itself and yeah it is amazing that it is very thoughtful because yeah, and it is very necessary to help people to be part of society fully. Yeah, change and how how the climate is is has is different from from what it was uh, before, and economy has been uh, increasing too in in importance given the energy situation and the talks about energy prices in in particular in southern Sweden, uh, the like, people have really felt that on their skin because electricity bills have been tenfolding in, in some areas. Wow. And that's part of, of the political debate as well. But I think the parties and the government have been saying, well, this is not due to the policies we have made, what the energy crisis is related to kind of what is happening, the war in Ukraine and so. And obviously there are differences between men and women, between their concerns. It's important to notice that uh, uh, like uh, yeah, crisis 
uh, with um, Russia and Ukraine, it is quite an um, important thing. And here we can see that prices on uh, um, all this stuff, electricity increased in some countries, including Sweden. And yeah, it's so sad and s like that all this happening, but at the same time, the law and order for me it's interesting what do they mean by law and order when they asking voters like what law and order uh yeah maybe she will tell about this more in detail it would be nice to hear uh, women are more concerned about health care and education whereas men are more concerned about law and order and immigration and that is also reflected in in how they vote, which parties they vote for. Um, then, could I have the following slide? Oh, wow. uh, well, in the opinion polls, um, uh, we have seen that the social democratic parties, they uh, experience kind of a Magdalena effect. You know, the social democratic party had their first female party leader and Sweden mm. received, even though being kind of the uh, model country of gender equality, their first female prime minister Magdalena Andersson, but that uh, effect seemed to be decreasing now before the elections. Uh, the Conservative Party had, had also, uh, were the second largest parties, but now the Sweden Democratic Party are sometimes above uh, the Conservative Party in the election polls, sometimes below, they are quite floating and that would be kind of a yeah. shock for the system if the Sweden Democratic Party would be the largest conservative party in the parliament, that would obviously impact on the government formation. So yeah. those are the three largest parties and there have been concern that some there is a... Yeah, and uh, we saw already together today these uh, results of elections. It was opinion polls before election itself. Because we know that this live stream, uh, this lecture, they did one uh, year ago. And here we can see uh, elections. Uh, here we are. A little bit. Um, yes, here we can see elections. Um, Uh, Social Democrats, they have 28%, 100 seats. seats. Uh, Sweden Democrats have 17.5% and, percent and uh, moderates 18, oh, sorry, 19.8% of votes. It is three major parties. Uh, Social Democrats, Sweden Democrats and, uh, um, as I said before, moderate. Yeah, and let's look at this. What do we have here? Social, moderates, and social democrats. Yeah. Interesting to compare, always interesting. Threshold or in the parliamentary elections, unless a party get 4% of the, the vote, they, would, they will have no representation in the parliament. But it seems now that all the small parties will make it over the 4% threshold. So. I mean, a, a, I think a good guess would be that we still will have eight parties in the parliament of, yeah. after uh, next uh, Sunday. And yeah. then the last slide uh, with the government for there is a slide with the government. Uh, well, there is no. This was the last one. OK, so it, it must have uh, it, it must have not have been there. So about the government formation. If the Social Democratic Party and, and the left wing parties and the left wing parties are or be, be belonging to kind of the center left block are the Social Democratic Party, the Green uh, Party, the left wing party and the center party has said that they will support a Social Democratic government uh, this time. If they get receives the plurality of the votes, they will receive um, the task to form the government by the Speaker of the Parliament. But if the bloc consisting of the Conservative Party, the Liberals, uh, the Christian Democrats and the Sweden Democrats will be the largest party, then they will receive um, the mission uh, to form the government. And that is left to see. And it's a very close race between the two blocs. And yeah. 
in I think irrespective of which block will win, there will be um, difficult negotiation. Negotiation. Uh, the speaker of the parliament say, well, this time it will not take the the governmental negotiations will not take. 134 days as last year it remains to be seen um, depending on 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 the requirements of the parties what they would like to have in return for either being a part of and yes Lindsay, i see that your message and uh, that's one of the reason why i decided to look about sweden i was i've heard many times about sweden electrical electoral system and uh, it is so fascinating to look and try to understand how it works and uh, it is helping you to understand uh, Sweden itself, electoral system itself. It is, yeah, fascinating, uh, enjoyable. And uh, uh, in the UK you say that, uh, you say it, your message, uh, let's look. Uh, we really only have two, three serious choices here in the UK and both have their downsides. Uh, and here you can find your interesting thing. I mean, like, that's uh, kind of like, wow. For me, uh, it is kind of, for a person who is from Russia, we have uh, several parties. But um, let's be honest, um, Russia doesn't have uh, real elections. As a result, uh, I mean, uh, everyone knows uh, what kind of party will rule, and it is sad. Uh, it is not uh, like if Russia would be um, like Sweden, because in a lot of ways you can find in Russia several parties too, but uh, these elections doesn't work well by some reasons in Russia, and that's why only party, one party has major votes, uh, m major uh, uh, chairmen, chairs in Russian parliament, Russian Duma, let's say like this. Anyway, it is enjoyable. That's one of the reasons why I like this uh, lecture. It is helping you to introduce how diverse can be uh, electoral system and uh, between them uh, how interesting can be this uh, this uh, tension let's say like this or maybe relationships like uh, they're trying to persuade their voters to do this or that and uh, it is yeah that's what I call representative parliament it is quite representative because uh, it has more we will watch in future by the way a lecture about interesting party a lecture about uh, singapore in singapore why it is interesting we will watch in future live streams lecture about singapore because they have quite interesting electoral system too yeah government or being a support party or government because i think one thing we can be sure of sweden will once again as it always have had have a minority government with one of the largest parties uh, in the government with some of the smaller parties and then there will be a number of support parties uh, supporting the the government from the parliament so that was kind of the background i think i maybe talked too long but Thank you very, very much. Uh, well, I ask the audience to prepare the questions. We shall uh, ask them live. In between, I, I have a few questions for both of you. Uh, you know, uh, you have spoken wonderfully about the, you know, but uh, about the, the framework, let's put it this way. But I did listen to the debates in English of the representatives of different parties in Sweden. And when one talks about gang wars, it is like Chicago. And uh, I would like to ask, uh, uh, A, what has failed? Why has there been this increase in gang wars? This is question one, but I'll ask both of you. Second, how come that younger and younger people join the gangs? Third, uh, I understand that Andres, uh, Anders Igeman, Minister for Integration and Migration, has spoken of the link between ethnicity 
and integration, and I, I assume crime, and what are the policies that different parties suggest uh, as a solution? When I spoke to Patrick preparing this event, he said it would take decades uh, to solve the problem. So let's start with you, Patrick, and then uh, 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 can you give us an idea what has failed, uh, even if it is ba based on perceptions, because perceptions are very important for the voters. Not everyone uh, uh, deals with nuances and details. Well, the, when something fails, uh, hugely, uh, one can say that there are many small parts contributing. Let me point out some of them. Uh, failed, failed integration. Um, uh, that you have areas in Sweden where you have a large uh, portion of the population coming from outside of Sweden, living not integrated and, and also uh, without jobs and, and uh, with not a good uh, future prospects of, of the lives uh, and, and also the sense of not belonging and here especially the second generation um, where where you have a lot of, of these feelings um, that is one I, uh, part. The, the second part is uh, the inflow of, of drugs and and the failure of, of stopping uh, drugs uh, and and the growing of, of um, the use of drugs, which drives an economy around this, uh, and uh, and uh, th there is a market for for drugs, and this also uh, creates different gangs competing for control of the market. Uh, a um, uh, part I of it, uh, I would let's argue say a couple of words. Of guns. Let's say a couple of words here. You can see that this live stream will be long, as I said, as I promised to you before. And obviously, uh, I, um, I think that it is quite a useful lecture for me. But I want to tell about a couple of words about gangs. No, sorry. Yes. One of the things which I didn't know about gangs in Sweden, because in my Russian mind, uh, I was uh, thinking about Sweden as paradise where uh, everything is perfect and uh, obviously that uh, every country has some problems and issues but I didn't know one thing which he said right now that in Sweden you can find problems with, uh, with uh, gangs and um, yeah, it is kind of interesting. I didn't know about this. That it, it that it is a, a huge problem. Seriously, uh, uh, I knew about immigration, obviously, and uh, immigration it is a problem not only in Sweden but also in uh, other countries of European Union uh, because. Uh, of integration, especially if we are talking about a uh, uh, second uh, generation, because if we will look on statistics, usually uh, this um, second generation, they can be, if they're not so well integrated or realized, um, pretty often they can be rights from the second generation, from young people. And we can see this, it was happening already in uh, France. Yeah, usually it was a protest from uh, immigrant people, yeah. Not usually, it depends, of course it depends. I'm talking like, I know everything, um, yeah, of course it depends, but still. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. It is already useful for me. I found already some useful information. This is amazing. Um, especially from former Yugoslavia, uh, yeah. which have uh, weaponized these gangs. Uh, mm -hmm. And these things together have created a toxic situation. Um, and also in this, um, uh, you talked about recruiting young. Uh, here you have also the combination of of, for example, uh, gangster rap, the creation of a glamorous lifestyle around criminality, um, wow. also with the combination of older guys knowing that if they use younger guys, they will not be punished in the system because you have uh, different um, thresholds 
um, for example, 15 or 18 in, in the penal system. So to avoid sanctions from the society, uh, you recruit younger people mm -hmm. who also looks up to the guys who are older that could have gold necklaces, uh, uh, nice cars and so on. Uh, nice cars so and so on. I do not have any car, uh, lucky for me, because I am not... Uh, uh, it means that uh, are we all in Alex Gan? We are in my English world Gan. It is a um, very peaceful Gan. It is a uh, uh, Gan of... It is community, let's say like this, which uh, believes in people, in... on bad... like, believes in everyone. Our community, I hope, believes in everyone. I believe uh, in humanity, I believe in uh, peace, and I hope that such lectures will help to me personally to understand better how this uh, elect like system works sometimes. And um, yes, it's better, of course, uh, be yourself always and uh, to respect others. And yes, okay, let's go. I didn't know that uh, such problems exist in Sweden. Wow. So this is the overall situation and, and this has grown now so much. So um, when you talk with, with police uh, who are, are working with this, um, they, this, they could openly state that this will take decades to solve. There is no quick fix. Uh, and that in and that said, with that said that means that there is no quick fix for either governmental path yeah. e either you get a right wing government or a more left wing government these problems will persist over time and Katrin would you like to 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 yeah, sure, co sure. complement what i did not say yeah, yeah i i i i'm fully agree with what patrick uh, says here and I mean you you Sweden uh, as in some states we have a very uh, active hip-hop uh, or or uh, uh, not hip-hop what is it um, gangster rap uh, scene and that's also connected I mean that shows how how widespread this is among uh, in Sweden too that there is kind of this romanticizing in certain parts of, of this kind of culture but I mean I okay if we are talking about romanticizing the culture or like uh, these gangs and stuff like this such culture uh, you can find these uh, these days quite popular in Russia um, serial series series of movie which is named uh, I will tell this in Russian Slova Patsana it means like a word of a guy you don't know how to translate this correctly anyway a word of a guy and uh, it is about um, some people um, talking uh, that this series romanti romanticizing gangs in Russia but uh, I was uh, watching uh, interview of this producer of this movie of this series and he said that he didn't try to romanticize anything his purpose was just to um, he was his purpose was just to show people reality how bad it was and uh, how like he he was trying to show people uh, like um it, it wasn't good to, uh, part of uh, history in Russia when uh, it, there was um, a lot of gangs in uh, in um, 80s during Soviet period of time because you can find such phenomenon in uh, Soviet Russia that some cities, uh, they, were, they had a lot of gangs. And here we have Sweden. Of course, uh, she's talking about romantiz romantizing this. I believe that it is um, it can happen in many countries such problem, and uh, it is interesting that uh, they're talking about this in this lecture. Yes, uh, I see your message. I have to go, Lisa Marshall. Thank you a lot for being with us today. And yes, it's not necessary to be with us all lecture because this lecture will be long. It will be until the end because for me it is a fascinating topic. But thank you a lot, Lisa, for everything what you are doing for our community. 
appreciate this a lot and uh, obviously such topics they are giving a lot of insights what is happening in some countries and they're helping you to understand what to do in such situation if uh, country has such problems okay let's go a bit about the political responses i mean as, yeah. as patrick said i mean this is not there is no quick fix for this situation yeah and i think the political parties are largely following their kind of ideological um uh, uh, course uh, when when trying to but still um but maybe changing i mean from the left-wing party and the social democratic party they point to that the problems we have are related to kind of socioeconomic inequality unemployment as i said the educational system have been, has been failing we have a lot of young people who leave school without having passed they have they are not they have not um, passed the, the examinations uh, and so they can't continue with their studies and then they say we have to start working with integration and we we have to put them into labor we have to provide them with 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 work and so on and that is the path to go and obviously that will take a, a long time because some of those who have been uh, coming to, to Sweden um, are need uh, a lot of, of education in order to be able to, to, to be employed, particularly the women. Uh, so, so that's, that's and, but we see, as you said, uh, Maria, uh, under Sigman, even in the Social Democratic Party, they have started talking about that we have to take tougher measures and since the social democratic party has been mine one belonging to most of the vocal critics of the sweden democrats being that kind of xenophobic very nationalist party with extreme uh, extremist roots which they actually have in both in in, in neo-nazi and fascist um, organizations and also international connections back in to in the 90s and even uh, later on uh, but still uh, the sweden social democrats now have started to look at their danish uh, colleagues uh, the social democratic party in denmark that fully adapted if i can say to the danish people's party's rhetoric so they talk about kind of ghetto areas and they want to dissolve the ghettos and they also employ specific ghetto politics so if you commit a crime in a ghetto area the punishment is kind of harder than if you commit a crime in other areas wow. i don't know to what extent that have been kind of, of implemented yet but and and i think you should see uh the statement by Ygeman, firstly as a strategic way uh kind of probing out what can we say uh, since i mean the social democratic party has changed their position on nato they have also changed their position on 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 immigration and criminality in it into a more restrictive uh, rhetorics so i think you could see the the statement by Ugeman as a way of probing out maybe we should can talk about in in terms of ethnicity as well that would haven't been possible i would say one year ago i mean this is kind of a very recent change and i I'm, it's hard for me to say to what extent that is kind of anchored within the broader party. I think there are members who are um, disappointed with him, but there are other members in the social Excuse democracy. Excuse me, and Catherine, is uh, uh, ethnicity a metaphor for Islam? Well, I mean, it's it, it's previous. I mean, the, the Islam has been uh, just just to continue. Uh, just to, to continue. Yeah, I was because. Then from uh, the right wing parties, the conservative parties and the, Lib and, and, uh, the Sweden Democratic Party, they see the solution to the problems. I mean, there you have more restrictive immigration. Immigration should be restricted. Uh, Sweden is kind of full. I mean, b before the war in Ukraine started and the U EU mass directive uh, came, uh, the Jimmy Åkesson, the party leader of the Sweden Democrats, said, well, Sweden is full. There are no more immigrants to Sweden. And other parties were kind of saying, well, we have to have very restrictive immigration policies. And even Magdalena Andersson said shortly days after the February 24th that, well, now it's up to the other European countries to take the responsibility because Sweden did that in 2015. Uh, so 
the parties to the right i mean they are going on more more powers to the police more police cooperation uh the police have to and and the judicial systems need to have more means at their disposal and then they are also saying well in other european countries actually i mean you could some see the increasing gang violence as a consequence of that with um, uh, Sweden got access to the police, you know this better than me, Patrick, the Encrochat uh, uh, files, and there they find that there were a lot of Swedish um, kind of criminals that were involved in transporting drugs in Europe and bringing it into Sweden. And so they have been arresting uh, many leaders of different Swedish gangs, and now there is, it is said, I don't know if, if it's true, that there is kind of internal um, kind of, of conflicts that are now playing out, and that's the one reason why we see increasing gang violence in Sweden. And of, obviously, the Swedish police and ju judiciary system would like to have means like that, which they don't have at, at this moment. Uh, and obviously, there is a discussion are these means efficient or not in combating and, and uh, kind of gang uh, violence and getting the Yes, what I need is definitely to have second uh, screen here because sometimes it is kind of not a uh, convenience for me to look and um, comments on screen. And yes, I, I need to have here another screen where I will be able to see our comments just separately from uh, program which I have in front of you. Uh, but uh, uh, if we will talk about... Uh, this uh, problem uh, again i never heard about this program program problem in sweden but uh, at the same time i started to realize uh, that uh, if we are talking about immigrants uh, sometimes it can happen pretty often that uh, some groups can be involved in the, uh, this uh, business let's say like this and uh, sorry to hear this of course obviously and um, uh, yeah, what I'm surprised to hear that, uh, um, to be honest, it's nothing surprising at the same time uh, that uh, such problem exists uh, sometimes. I mean, uh, in Russia, such problems exist too, but on probably not on such scale because usually. Uh, Russians want to move from, uh, I mean, like, um, it's just different situation, different situation and difficult. Uh, I don't know how some people can compare uh, countries and their situations because uh, countries kind of like have different situations, but still, it is interesting. It is a mind opening lecture for me and um, yeah. Okay, let's go. Crimes. So for your as you, for your question, uh, ethnicity. I mean, uh, until two thousand eighteen, it was kind of the Sweden Democrats that were talking about that different cultures don't go uh, very well along together. There are conflicts, and they. <laughs> I see your message, Lindsay. In Russia, they are all trying to get out, not get in. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, uh, in some way you are right, uh, but still you can find, uh, yes, of course, Russians trying to move from Russia, you are right, completely, that several millions of people, they moved from Russia for last year. But um, if we will look on the big picture, also you can find a lot of uh, people who is from post-Soviet uh, countries, they are moving to Russia for a job. It is historically happening like uh, right now that immigrants from uh, uh, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and uh, uh, some other countries, so they're going to Russia for a job and uh, they're making, doing some job which Russians for such salaries will not do because for them it is kind of like uh, um, too low salaries. And th this moment I believe that uh, um because of sanctions and stuff like this probably there will be changes uh immigrants from north korea will go to russia for job too it's it looks like it is logical decision because um 
of everything they uh, uh, will do some agreements about some uh, yeah but yes you're right obviously that russians try and not only russians but i mean russians um, who has citizenship uh, not like nation like yeah citizenship of russia they're trying to move from russia because of many 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 reasons and war in ukraine it is one of them because uh, they disagree with this policy but yeah, yeah i completely agree with you i need to look in the future we will watch definitely some lectures because i do not want to i want to be i want my Alex, a lot of people from Kyrgyzstan stopped going to Russia because they do not want to get included into the war. Yes, you are completely right, Jamie Dreams. It is completely true. And uh, I saw already some uh, um, short videos on, uh, on uh, Instagram where it was recommended to me by, <laughs> by Instagram and sometimes by YouTube. Uh, you can find that... Uh, people talking that looks look at this what is happening inside russia a lot of immigrants they do they stop to go to work to russia because it is already not so profitable one reason and second reason uh, one of the reasons that uh, 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 russian government trying to conscript them to the military despite that they are not in military Oh, sorry, despite that they are not Russian citizens, uh, it is very strange and I was talking with some people and uh, yes, it is uh, sad what is happening right now. I hope that Russian policy will change, I hope that they will be stop uh, war in future and uh, um, everything will be like... Yeah, we will watch uh, about Russia separate lecture way we will try to understand about all this stuff all these processes what is happening right now we will watch about for this for sure because right now i do not do not want to speculate on this topic because i do not know so many things yes i want to watch such kind of a lecture about russia too for sure it will be it will be i promise to you yes hello to last one hello to Polly from Michigan, uh, hello to everyone who is joined right now. I want to remind to you that uh, this live stream will be long. I decided, as I, as I promised to myself at first, I want to improve my knowledge about all things which is happening around the world, how electoral systems working in different countries around the world. We will watch in future videos about India, about Singapore, and about Russia, about uh, 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 Sweden we are watching right now, about Germany, France, Italy, about all countries around the world, because it is fascinating to look and to listen uh, opinion uh, of some professors. Okay, let's go. We have to adapt. I mean, that was part of their nationalist rhetoric. We have seen also that that other parties increasingly have started talking in the same way but not using kind of a pure nationalist um, uh, way way of of, of uh, talking but of course um, the sweden democrats previously talked about is particularly islam as a foreign culture that is not kind of uh, compatible with western value as do many other far and extreme right parties in Europe, and um, and and the, I think this was the first time that a social democratic minister used ethnicity as a way, and and he was actually responding to a question posed by a journalist. So I don't know if he would have done that unless he would have received the question. But he talked, say, well, we should have um, not mowed our was it 50% non-Nordic inhabitant in certain parts? And obviously he meant suburbs. So this is also kind of a new element in the, in the Swedish uh, debate. And I think many were kind of surprised that the social democratic minister started talking about ethnicity. Ethnicity has been part of the Swedish political debate, but from then, from, from the, the usual suspect, uh, the Sweden Democrats.
So, uh, in other words, uh, the Social Democrats are setting the agenda. Uh, sorry, uh, the Swedish Democrats are setting the at least the rhetoric and the agenda. Yes. Mm, yeah. Patrick, okay. one more question, and please prepare or raise your hand or tell me through the chat that you want to uh, raise a question and uh, yes, we do it live. Uh, Patrick, uh, I would like to know the policy towards Russia and the attitude uh, war in Ukraine and Russia. Uh, are there any voices that say, well, probably the sanctions are hurting us more than they are hurting Russia? Are there any dissenting voices or all political parties are in favor of sanctions and the, uh, and the let's say, European uh, policy towards Russia and the war in Ukraine? Yes, that is the short answer. There is a, a total support for Ukraine within the political debate in Sweden. There is no voices in the debate, in the election debate, saying that uh, we are taking more heat beating than, than Russia uh, with the sanctions and we should, uh, uh, we should uh, 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 abandon Ukraine and, and get the energy flowing again. If someone did that in the Swedish election right now, that person, and if it was a party leader, that that would just be a big, big failure and get heavily beaten in the debate. There is uh, no room in the Swedish debate to take that position and, and be standing after the criticism, to, to speak it very bluntly. Sweden stands very, very firm behind the sanction sh scheme and Ukraine. And if the economic uh, uh, consequences of the war bite, uh, I understand Sweden founded an agency for psychological resilience. Do you think uh, they will help uh, people to uh, resist uh, the hardship? Well, the, the, the agency is not working uh, on the domestic debate. That is very important to, to, to point out. It's an agency working against foreign influence. So if Russia would uh, launch a larger campaign. I mean, there is a small size campaign ongoing all the time in the low intensive area, but if they would increase, then the, the, the agency would step in and, and point out that the Russians are, are doing this. Uh, and they are also working on, on increasing the knowledge and, and the resilience in the information sphere of the society. Right now they have a campaign where they show magicians uh, manipulating uh, people's uh, memory uh, in, in order to show people that you can be manipulated. So there are, are on YouTube videos right now on, on their campaign. Uh, but I would like to also to point out one thing that we haven't mentioned, and that is um, the connection, one, between extremists and criminality. You, you see those connections both from, from the... Um, militant Islamic uh, side, but also um, connection be between far-right uh, motorcycle gangs and so on. Uh, uh, and also uh, one thing that happened during the Swedish um, election, and that was um, you had a, a terror attack in Almedalen, Gotland, in the beginning of July, where a woman was stabbed by a person with a oh background. Gosh in the Nordic resistance movement. It is uh, terrible. And the Nazi movement, even if he acted on his own and he was he deemed psychologically unfit when he did that deed. But he had another target. The one he killed was a woman involved in, in psychiatric. Um, uh, in, she was um, um, working with, with Swedish psychological psychiatric uh, uh, care. Uh, but he had also another target, and that was the center party leader, Annie Lööf. Uh, so now in the process of, of court, uh, it is uh, said that, that she was his preferred target. And, and that is also something to, to reflect upon on the level of, of the debate. Um, and, and, the, and the intensity of the debate, which uh, is also one thing that has been discussed during the election.
Well, you have mentioned uh, right-wing Nazi extremism that a lot of us who are not uh, from the Nordic countries have learned through Millennium and other novels, uh, crime novels. But uh, how about uh, the Islamic State and uh, uh, gangs? Is there any connection there? Uh, yeah. uh, uh, foreign yeah. uh, uh, or the Kurds? Well, well, you have you have in the in the extreme Islamic uh, groups you have connections uh, different ways uh, both on on uh, on tapping welfare system for example having schools and kindergartens but also to gangs and and you have also seen uh, when 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 the, that Dane Rasmus Paladin w went around in Swedish communities and, and burning the Koran, uh, you had some, uh, some uh, turmoils. Uh, and there you also see the connections between uh, hardliner, Islamic, uh, and, and also criminality. So, so there, are, uh, there are connections there. Thank you. Can, yeah, I, I, can I just yeah, add please. to that, that, that there is I mean, a lot of research, there is research showing that extremists are more active during elections years because that provides them with visibility. And uh, we should also remember that Sweden has a, a kind of a sad history of, of, of politicians uh, being uh, killed. Uh, we had Ann Un, Un, uh, uh, Linde. Anna Lind, that was uh, killed during the, Euro was it the European parliamentary campaign. No, the Euro, no, the no, Euro, the Euro, referendum, Euro, Euro referendum, referendum campaign in 2003. Uh, so I mean, that's that's uh, that's very, and, and of course, then Olaf Palme that was killed in in, in 1986. That's a long time ago, but that was also uh, a, a, it's kind of a, a murder that's still not really uh, solved. Uh, so, but we know that extremists are are more acting during election years, not only in Sweden but in other countries. Oh, yeah, it is sad. It is sad general, uh, to you hear mean, this. Uh, far right supremacist group or foreign extremists, both. Both, but, for, but mainly since I'm I'm doing research on far right, we can see that far right groups and and both kind of the parliamentary far right and the more extre ex extremist. I mean, like the Nordic resistance movement that a purely nation nationalist. Oh my gosh, when I hear this information, it was always said to hear this and what can I do, like, uh, what can we do, just try to improve ourselves and uh, uh, to spread our uh, word, to sp spread values, uh, to respect others, to respect uh, others' choice, because pretty often uh, people, uh, they not um, so tolerant to others, even if they live in... Uh, um in a new country they're not accepting the rules of this society and it is kind of wow uh, i mean uh yes it is always important to respect 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 it doesn't matter what beliefs i mean like yeah yeah it's also level you're talking about education i mean i've heard many times that swede sweden uh, education quite good, but uh, if we are talking about uh, immigrants, uh, that's why it is important always to have programs which will help people to be part of this society, to be uh, to emerge into this society, and to be uh, to understand language and uh, etc. Yeah, well, the socialist uh, movement that they are more more active during. Uh, and we should not forget that there is another uh, far right party that kind of a, 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 a secession uh, from from the Sweden Democrats. It's their old youth association. One moment, I will do one thing. I will put to charge my battery just in case I need to do this one second. I'm here. Yes, I'm here as always. Yeah, come on. And um, I just decided to put my battery for camera in charge. If this battery will uh, 
go off i will be ready for s such circumstances and yes it is said that uh, sometimes uh, people do not respect other culture i don't know like it is kind of wow okay let's go let's continue listening to this amazing amazing uh alex get you say passports i would be happy i would I, I will be happy if i will become american citizen through time and uh um, it would be amazing that uh, because um, I like democracies, I like, uh, example, try to understand this stuff, uh, I mean, um, about uh, how democracy works, it is so fascinating for me. And uh, yeah, we will see, time will show truth, because right now talking and promising to myself and to others, it is too early, I mean, time will show, only time will show truth, we will see. But by itself, to, by Russian law, it is also um, legal to have two citizen, dual citizenship. Uh, by American law, it is also um, like uh, you can have dual citizenship. And that's, I think, it is quite amazing. It doesn't mean that I have plans. I do not have plans to go to Russia, at least, uh, uh, I mean, like it is crazy idea, but... Um, to have American citizenship, it is uh, very amazing, amazing and valuable to have. Anyway, we are talking right now not about me and not about my personal things and personal stuff. Let's continue watching elections in Sweden, external and internal security challenges. Um, I found for myself today a lot of already uh, uh, topics which I didn't know before and um, we found out today a few things let's because it is kind of big uh, live stream let's uh, for those who joined only right now let's remind what we saw already today what we heard of these professors about Sweden that Sweden had elections in 2018 and we saw today these statistics uh, which party won in 2018 elections also we know that um, uh, Sweden elections have uh, proportional uh, proportional um, they have eight parties uh, political parties and they have nine leaders of these parties and the pro representative uh, proportional how would say Gosh, I already cannot think. <laughs> anyway, we can see, I want to show to you this graphic which we saw today before. Uh, in 2022, uh, one Social Democrats, they have 28%, uh, 100 seats. In um, uh, 20, also Sweden Democrats, 17.5 and uh, moderate, 19.8%. Yes, also they have other other parties, like we can see them too, and um, it is quite fascinating to look at this uh, in picture, this uh, from election results 2018, and we can see how diverse, diverse uh, Sweden, Sweden, uh, Parliament is. Yes, it's always fascinating, it's always fascinating that I like that, um, it is helping me to understand uh, uh, this electoral system. Also, this tension between some kind, some political parties you can see, and uh, decisions which they're making and why they took such decision. It is also important that they're trying to open all of this questions a little bit of course for uh, one uh, and a half hour it is impossible to understand everything but let's go let's continue to watch this uh, to which the sweden democrats broke their ties with in 2015 and that's alternative for sweden they are aiming for for uh, parliamentary power and we have two uh, three elections at the same time the national the regional and the local and they hope to gain some representation, at least in some local um, communities. That remains to be seen. But they are, are quite extremist. And I suppose that they may have a different relation to the Russia, to Russia and Russian interests mm. and also to the far right uh, in, in Ukraine as well. I know that 
they have been visit they have been visiting uh, one another uh, they have international uh, contacts thank so you uh, Stefan, Patrick knows also, more uh, about that Stefan uh, from the Austrian press agency I will introduce those that I know Stefan please go ahead yes uh, thank you Miriana uh, I would like to thank both experts for the very interesting uh, presentations. Oh, new um, person. I've got a question um, concerning the um, uh, Euro skepticism in Sweden, because uh, Sweden has been um, for many years one of the countries that is said to be more Eurosceptic than than others. Uh, there has been also talk about the Swexit uh, after the Brexit. <laughs> uh, and I would Swexit. Like to know from both of you. It is a very interesting uh, terminology, Swexit. Um, we know Brexit and they right now talking about Swexit, of course. Um, I, I something I do not believe that it will happen with with uh, Sweden, I don't know why I don't believe, but it looks like uh, in my mind. Uh, but I didn't believe even about Britain that they will do this Brexit thing because, uh, yeah, for me it was huge surprise to find out about Brexit. Uh, in Russia, they t were talking about this a lot and. Uh, uh, it was a huge topic for Russian propaganda, and right now they're using this uh, for Russian propaganda, so... And yes, um, it is, it is what it is. Okay, let's go. You, uh, if there has been some kind of change uh, in this attitude, uh, in, this, in, in, this pub in this public attitude after the Ukraine crisis, we have seen that, that Sweden has aligned uh, with NATO, but has it also become more friendly towards the European Union, uh, or is this uh, unchanged? We have also seen in the in Denmark that there has been a shift. There has been a referendum about uh, um, a closer allegiance with the European Union. I would like to know how um, the situation is in Sweden right now. Thank you. Thank you, Who will start, Patrick? Foreign policy. Well, and then you. Uh, to, to there is a broad support for the EU membership in the Swedish public, yeah, uh, and and that has been broad support for a very long time, and that is very stable. Um, and uh, what you're referring to is is perhaps also that we have decided not to join the euro, uh, and that was the the referendum in 2003. And they're as stable as the support is for the EU membership, the same way the stability of not wanting to join the euro persists euro. in the Swedish debate. Yeah, um, it is economic I would say that, that the Swexit debate is, is uh, that died uh, among those who tried to, to push it after the, the catastrophic failures of, of the Brexiteers and when they saw the havoc of, of the Brits. Uh, with that said, uh, you cannot exclude the possibility that it will come back because the Sweden Democrats do not want to be a part of, of the EU. Um, and, uh, uh, his name is <laughs> Patrick, we can see who is that man. Uh, his name is Patrick, we can see uh, on the screen. I hope that you can see on the left screen it should be. And uh, he is one of the professors, if I'm correct. And, uh, um, he was introducing himself at the beginning of our live stream, and it is yeah. Uh, never saw him. I never saw him too. I do not. I never saw all of them, and uh, that's uh, in future probably we will watch uh, a little bit more something about Sweden, and not only about Sweden, about other uh, countries and cultures too, because it is fascinating to find something new always, especially if we are talking about political science. Yeah. Patrick, <laughs> some professor. I think that in the long term, they might influence uh, the moderate party and the Christian Democrats, who has been truly pro-European parties, especially the moderates, uh, in this. But this is still five years from now that I guess that if this happened, then is it's when you can see it. Thank you. And Catherine? I I could I could add to that. Yes, I mean the the debate on the European Union and and the 
uh, attitudes towards the EU have been become more positive during the last last yeah. years. Uh, and I think it also applies to the euro, but it's not an, a political issue. I mean, if you have a referendum on not joining the euro, it's very difficult to change that decision. And since the Swedish economy has been doing quite well outside the euro, I mean, there is no reason for and you can see also that countries inside the euro haven't been doing that well. There is no kind of political interest in time you know, of pushing for that question. Uh, but what could be added is that that the there have been three parties that have had that have had uh, that the the issue that Sweden should leave uh, the European Union, like a Swexit in their programs, that has been the left wing party, the Green Party, and the Sweden Democrats. The Green Party removed that paragraph from the party program when they became a member of a Swedish government that was kind of a part of, of becoming a legitimate governmental party. Uh, that was in 2000. Oh, now I don't remember. Is it, when, when did the Green Party join the government? Was it 2012? Uh, now 14. 14, 14, 14. Yes, yeah, 2014. And we can also see that the Sweden Democrats, they have softened up on the European Union. They are negative uh, to for this kind of, of supranational enti entity like the European Union, but they see no concern for joining it right now or leaving it right now. And I mean, with the, the war in Ukraine, um, they accepted the EU mass directive in an area which they have been very critical, that is EU having a common asylum and and uh, forming common asylum and immigration policies so these two parties have actually changed a lot but yes uh, jamie dreams i prefer the path of peace thank you i'm uh, one of the guy who prefers path of peace and for peace i will always talk about this it is uh, my uh, my always like peace why not to live peacefully and i am always for cultural exchange uh, it is what I will always talk about uh, and um, yeah if I'm trying to understand a little bit about other countries I mean like yeah peace um, should be or must be everywhere and I'm only for peace too and I'm happy that Jamie you for peace too or you was talking about the other thing because uh, you had chat in community in our community maybe I did understood something wrong Okay. But of course, it's like Patrick said, it can, they, they have kind of a freedom of maneuver, so mm -hmm. they can change their position back, particularly the Sweden Democrats, depending on, on what's, what's happening. But since the far right is becoming stronger in Europe uh, in general, uh, we can see that they also cooperate a lot in the European Parliament in, and in the European Union institutions. So they see that kind of an important platform for their uh, activities as well. And now when Sweden is, is taking over the chairmanship uh, of the European Union in, in from January, I mean, they have, uh, well, they have said one of the priorities will be uh, Ukrainian membership uh, to, to push on for, for Ukrainian membership in the EU. And Sweden Democrats have been a party that the EU shouldn't become larger. I mean, then they have talked about Turkey. It, let, it remains to be seen if Ukraine would be kind of a acceptable um, partner in the in a future European Union. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? Because I I have more. Um, it's amazing. Well, I love questions. I, I'll ask a question. Yes, can I um, ask a quick question? Yes, of course. Please Hi. introduce yourself. I'm Verena Sophie Meyer, ORF uh, Radio. Um, you mentioned that uh, the Sweden Democrats there's concern about their. Um, Right, uh, so they're sorry, I'm currently on the way to the airport for actually going to Sweden. Um, oh, they have welcome. Ties. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. So, um, there's been concern about Russian uh, ties to Russia, um, as I understand what the social democrats say. So, um, but actually, they changed their stance on NATO. Could you explain that a little bit? Well, uh, if you look back in time, uh, Sweden Democrats have been been involved with with other far right uh, European parties that have been very pro Russian, for example, Nigel Farage, uh, they gave a prize award to Václav Klaus in 2016 in Stockholm. 
uh, etc., etc. And uh, their voting pattern when they entered the European Parliament in 2014 was to follow uh, UKIP and also that we see on the, uh, that for example when their former defense uh, uh, spokesperson Mikael Jansson left the party in 2018, he's, he immediately joined the Alternative for Sweden and went to a, a Duma conference in Moscow uh, arranged for pro-Russian parties and, and he praised Putin for his uh, involvement in Syria at that meeting. Uh, and, and what is most problematic today, I would say that uh, the Sweden Democrats cooperate uh, or perhaps also partly uh, uh, control uh, the alternative media landscape that is very pro-Russian. Uh, so that is what they're doing on one hand. On the other hand, they realized in 2014, 2015, uh, that it was not uh, very good in the Swedish debate to become pro-Russian because um, the sentiment in, in Sweden traditionally is not pro-Russian and their own heritage is, is from the Nazi movement and, and their so-called forefathers in the party demonstrated around the, the statue of Charles XII in Stockholm. Uh, the, the hero king that got defeated in Poltava 1709, standing there in the statue pointing eastwards. Uh, and here, yeah, it's interesting to listen to him. And they see your message, Jamie Dreams, and your message, Sam Smith. You say that Alex, I believe in peace through strength, that is why I always think like a predator. Wow, <laughs> it's very interesting. And I see your message, Jamie Dreams, that you say that. Sorry, I'm drinking too much water, probably. Um, Alex, uh, we were talking about breaking uh, joints. What? <laughs> joints? I have done in uh, self-defense, but I was saying how I prefer to be peaceful, not aggressive. Yeah, I got it. I got it. I, I was thinking more about, obviously, topic itself, because uh, here it is um, political uh, it is topic about elections in Sweden, external and internal security challenges, and they were talking about uh, some um, some things about uh, about Russia and Ukraine and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay. And I saw then your message that I decided uh, that you was talking about uh, about uh, this thing. But yes, it's still my message. My opinion didn't change. Obviously, I want to have peace every way. It doesn't matter which part of the world we are talking about because uh, I'm not a politician, lucky for me. And I believe that uh, only respect of other, uh, other countries, uh, their territories, uh, it is important. It doesn't matter which country we are talking about. Uh, it is always important to respect their um, sovereignty, their territory and their choice itself. I think that, yeah, it is a very important thing. It doesn't matter which we are country talking about. And um, yeah, it is a very very interesting that uh, this lecture quite um, I didn't expect this at the beginning that it will be so um, so diverse in opinion I was thinking I was thinking that here will be uh, only two maybe maximum three professors but as we found out uh, we have here a lot of experts okay let's go <laughs> it is nice they realized that it was better for them to build political influence uh, in order to, to, to ditch Russia and then they started to work with their connections to the Republican Party, the Trump Republican Party uh, and uh, with the Trump Republicans um, they kind of outmaneuvered out the, the moderates because traditionally the moderates and the Republicans have been sister parties. But the, the moderates, uh, they, they didn't like Trump and they are old, the old Republican, so to speak. Uh, so here they moved uh, their, their, their efforts in, in the foreign policy because they also realized that in, in order to get influence over, over a Swedish government, 
uh, Russia would never work out with the, with the Conservative Party. So that is basically uh, what has happened uh, the last seven years. Thank you. Uh, I, I have could a, just, a I'm sorry, please I go could, ahead. I could just add to that. I'm, I'm, I'm agree with, with a lot of, of with, with what Patrick is saying. And I mean, it, this is kind of, a, it's, it's a very sensitive issue in Scandinavia and given the, the also in Finland is the same for the far right party and given the Finland has, has had a war with Russia, I mean, it would be kind of a, very hard to, to have relationship with with uh, Russia. And I see you see the same pattern among the Nordic and Scandinavian far right parties. If you compare with the FPÖ in, in, in Austria that have kind of a bilateral agreement with United Russia and also uh, Salvini and Lega that were personal friend with Putin and traveling a lot to, to Russia as well. So the Sweden Democrats have also on the European level and in the European Parliament been reluctant to cooperate and sit in the same party group as these more pro-Russian um, radical right parties in, in, in Europe. So they, um, and, and that's also part of the explanation why they have forged contact with kind of, of conservative and kind of far right uh, tendencies in the Republican uh, party in the US presently, because they have, bear, have been part of the ECR Europe are conservative and reformists in, in, the par in the European Parliament. And so they have also closer connections with kind of conservative British politicians, but also in other European countries, and as well with the um, Republican Party. Okay, uh, and the next question is uh, Jürgen uh, 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 St uh, Streichhammer from the Austrian paper Die Presse. Jürgen, go ahead. Yes, good morning. Uh, thank you for your valuable insights so far. Um, uh, I wondered if Danish so social democrats have become kind of a role model for, for their Swedish colleagues uh, uh, nowadays. Because as far as I understand, they, the Danish social democrats have been tougher on immigration. They have put in some, some, some tough measures also to tackle gang violence. And the Swedish social democrats have been reluctant to, to go the same path. But now this is changing. So do you see that the Danish social democrats are becoming kind of a role model? And if yes, which concrete steps are, are the Swedish social democrats considering that are already in place uh, in, in Denmark or have been put into place in Denmark? Uh, this question uh, goes to both of you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jürgen. Go ahead. Uh, uh, and Catherine, go ahead. I, I, I can I can start. I mean, I think the Social Democratic Party wouldn't admit admit it publicly uh, that they are looking to Denmark because it's the Sweden Democrats that always have been upholding Denmark as the model country that Sweden should follow when it comes to immigration and law and order. When Jimmy Åkesson was asked, the, Jimmy Åkesson, the party leader of the Swe uh, Sweden Democrats was asked which is his favorite place in Sweden. He said uh, a, a small town in, in Denmark, a suburb outside Copenhagen. So it was Denmark that was kind of the, his favorite place in Sweden, meaning mm -hmm. that Sweden should become like Denmark. Uh, but and, and within the Social Democratic Party, there have been a few voices saying, well, the Sweden Social Democrats should look at the Danish Social Democrats part because they have been doing quite well in the elections. And, and that's the reason why they are in, in government right now. And why they have been successful is that they have been uh, adapting to the Danish People's Party's rhetorics on law and order, immigration, segregation, to a such an extent that they have been outbidding the Danish People's Party and now the Danish People's Party, because of that, but also because of internal problems within the party, as well as there is a new uh, competitor, uh, the Nya Borjelig in Denmark, that are out, uh, that are competing for, for the same uh, voters as the Danish People's Party. So um, there are many aspects to, to looking at Denmark, both for finding policy solutions, believing that you kind of can um, get away with the, the radical right party, but it doesn't seem to be the case because there are always voters prepared to vote for such a party and also then to, to um, have 
get into government. I think it is, um, it, it is maybe that in, in the longer term, it might not be um, kind of a good strategy because what we see in the Danish case that they haven't been able to increase their vote. Uh, they are actually now losing votes after the pandemics. During the pandemic, uh, all parties in government uh, kind of, of increased their share of the votes and so did even the the Danish Social Democratic parties, but now Mette Fredriksson, the party leader and Danish prime minister, is not doing that well. So uh, policy-wise, yes, I think the, the Social Democrats are increasingly looking at them, Denmark, but they are reluctant to say so. And also, uh, from a strategic point of view, trying to win back the workers who have transferred their votes to the radical right party. In the short time, it might be successful. In. Yeah, it is one of the things with uh, Sweden. We can uh, see that uh, Sweden has uh, eight parties, political parties, eight. It is insane, and all of them you can find in parliament. And obviously, uh, it is uh, um, every time when you go to vote or um, during elections, you're like, wow, you're asking yourself questions. What difference is between these parties? You're asking yourself a question, what party you, you will choose and which party suits for you uh, better than, um, like, and it is quite an um, interesting question uh, that is, uh, uh, like, giving you opportunity, like, as a result, you need to read, obviously, a program of every party and to be, um, to, to, to know what, uh, their politics uh, and the uh, politics and uh, policy are and uh, who leader of this or that party it is uh, quite complicated sometimes i know that in um, uh, such uh, electoral systems you can find that uh, parties can emerge into each other because they want uh, example uh, to find the found example uh, uh, common ground and as a result like okay we can emerge and we can have uh, more votes as a result and um, i completely agree with you uh I, what you said uh, jamie alex um, uh eight political parties is just crazy to me how too many ones are hard enough um we are talking about um uh, comparatively small country. Oh, Sweden has like 10 millions of people and as a result uh, uh, all these uh, for small uh, countries like Sweden such system is uh, better than uh, for big cities like uh, for, for big countries like the USA and uh, because um, yeah they can for them this uh, system is much better than two parties because uh, yeah it is i was uh, watching other lecture about this and uh, it makes sense for sweden it will not work the two-party system uh, because uh, maybe it will work but uh, um no it will not work i do not see this working in sweden i don't know why <laughs> I do not know why, because maybe um, probably of uh, size of country and population itself. Uh, this is one of the reason I think so. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, I will not give my conclusions. <laughs> I mean, like for Sweden, it is it works because. Yeah, of historical also. Uh, history behind, yeah, okay. Traditions, yeah, it makes sense too. In the longer term, it's not sure because what has happened in Denmark is that the middle class social democratic voters with more liberal values they have moved on to other parties and left the social democratic parties, not all but some of them. Thank you, Patrick. And well, I ju would just shortly phrase it as uh, that we have seen test balloons. <sighs> And again, when we are talking about two, it is just different systems and uh, formula, the, how they're counting uh, these um, uh, 
elections completely different. In uh, Sweden, it is proportional. In uh, um, in the USA, it is a different formula, uh, like uh, my minor cut. My minor political parties, they're taking all seats. Uh, major, major, yeah, big parties, they're taking all seats. As a result, all these uh, other parties, they do not have uh, any representative. Uh, but you can find other parties in the USA for sure. Just um, they do not have this different formula, different formula, different system. That's all. Yeah. The paradigm shift. Yeah, and I, you can find these, um, uh, you can find these, um, uh, how would say, you can find this formula, uh, statistics. What if all parties, what if all parties will. Uh, have seats in the USA. I mean, in Congress. Uh, we can find even uh, images which can show you... Oh, no, it is not this one. There was amazing image which can help you to understand how diverse the USA. I cannot find, probably, I will, will not be able... Yes. Okay, I will not be able to find, because um, in future, I promise to you that I will try to find this uh, um, statistics because uh, uh, you can find some people they did already this graphic if uh, all parties in the USA will have proportional system like in Sweden um, picture of uh, uh, governments and Congress in the USA will be completely different but I believe that uh, for the USA it is um, it is big country it makes sense to have a two-party system. It is uh, easier in a lot of ways system and uh, it is more understandable for people. Uh, I think it makes sense. For Sweden, it will not work, I feel so, because it is another culturally different country. Uh, and I was, yeah, it, and... Uh, it is very interesting. Alex, I wonder how much the social structure has influenced Sweden's politics. Yeah, I wonder too. We will... Social in structure influenced uh, Sweden politics. Yeah, it would be nice to find out in future. Why not? Looks like a good topic to watch maybe in future. I see. Uh, Isadora Wallnöver, could you please uh, introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm Isadora Weinhofer from The Standard. It's a newspaper in Austria. Um, wow, well, from newspaper. I have newspaper. three questions. Uh, first, uh, the rising living costs in Sweden are a big topic, as you said. And Magdalena Andersson released a big package to combat the effects of the rising costs. Um, so first, do you think that benefited her? And second, are there parties that are fiscally more conservative when it comes to spending and social um, Kind of welfare spending. Thank you. Which one would like to reply? I guess. Uh, and well, 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 or you want? I, yeah, please. I, I, I can start this time, and and uh, uh, I think uh, when you look at at what the parties own, what kind of questions they own. Uh, one thing that that the social democratic owns in the in the public's view is the ownership of crisis management. So in that perspective, I would say that this package um, will, will benefit the Social Democrats because they show that they are, are ready, able and willing to, to respond to the energy crisis by, by this package in order to avoid a collapse of, of the energy market and the energy market firms. Uh, so that is, is um, um, 
uh, what I would would argue. Uh, on the on the fiscal term, we have had uh, um, um, what one could say um, the experience of the 90s, which have made the Swedish financial economical uh, terms that that the all parties have said that they are following fiscal rules, but this has been undermined the last uh, couple of years. Um, but there has been a consensus in the Swedish um, uh, public debate uh, among the parties that you should follow these fiscal rules in order to create a budget surplus uh, in order to, to have uh, for, for a crisis like what we are seeing now. Uh, and perhaps uh, Jungar can can give that in, in more detail. Well, I, 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 I agree a lot with, with Patrick. And, and as, as you saw when presenting, which are the kind of the most topical issues during the election campaign, economy has been climbing, but it's not belonging to the top priorities. So I think it's hard for kind of the older parties that have been uh, responsible for crisis management and, and dealing with economic crisis to kind of mobilize voters on, on those issues. It remains to be seen. There are a couple of days uh, remains, but it's it's hard to see. Um, well, I would also say that that in terms of, of uh, the economic situation, I think when it comes to government formation, uh, I think there will be more uh, problems if there we would have a center right government, because there are are even though they are closer to one uh, one another economically wise than for instance the social democratic party and the conservative party there will indeed be tensions because i think both the conservative party and the liberal party would push for uh, maybe lower taxes and and uh, not to to reduce kind of these private un initiatives like the uh, center left government would like to do but i think the sweden democrats obviously if they I, I think it's hard to see them in government after these elections, but they would probably be a support party and in exchange for their votes in parliament, they would have to have concessions. And obviously mostly in their kind of core issues like immigration and law and order and, and information. Yeah. But obviously they have now in during the electoral campaign said, well, we won't accept any kind of, of reductions in, in when it comes to to unemployment uh, benefits. Uh, they would also like to include dental care into the public health care. It's oh, wow. just partially done so. So they are more left uh, wing leaning on, on, on the welfare issues. But I, it's hard to see that they would press for these issues so hard if they would get concessions on their major issues. So there is a, a greater um, internal conflict on economic issues uh, in a potential center um, um, uh, right government than in the center left. Well, in the center left, we have the center party that would be kind of a, 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 a difficult uh, party to, to please on, on economic policies for the social democratic parties. And in particular, if, if the green and the left wing party would be support parties, but that remains to be seen uh, what, what will be the case. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, my third question, sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, you said that uh block policy uh, or block politics are dissolving but we see that sd has kind of joined the right block and uh, the center has joined um the left block so why do you think that those block politics are dissolving well i mean uh, they have dissolved in terms of that we have a center right uh, block and the center party was part of the alliance the center right block and now they have transferred, as you say, uh, to the Social Democratic Party. So obviously they are playing out that we had, there are two governmental alternatives that the voters can choose on this. So you know now uh, that if you vote on the center party, you won't support the formation of a center right government. So still that is in play, but you don't know what position they will have in government in, in that sense and what they will um, kind of it's it, it's part of the negotiations after the elections what types of concessions the center party would like to have in order to support the social democratic government and obviously if they support or not is related to their support in the elections i mean i think for party leaders it's important to give these cues to the voters which government will i support and then they will see 
well, how does that affect the opinion in the opinion polls? But the real, uh, the result will be seen in the elections. And if the Centre Party would do a bad elections, given that they would support a, a central right, central left government, it, it's not sure that they will be a support party. So there is a lot of strategizing after the elections uh, to be expected as well against Thank the you. backward of their increase of the vote. Georg? Thank you. Unmute yourself, Georg. Did you ever stress about oh, Wow, we have advertisement first time. Having three kids? No. I was always part of the plan. For this uh, one hour life's uh, like um, a lecture, we have already advertisement. It is first time, and uh, obviously, it is fascinating to find out something new about what is happening uh, in uh, Sweden. This um, uh, tension between parties and uh, their decision, why they're doing such decision about their. Um, internal security challenges and external uh, challenges why uh, some parties are uh, losing points and others gaining them obviously that um, such a lecture can help uh, anyone to understand what is happening uh, inside of European Union why they are talking about uh, so accident maybe why they're not talking about so exit at all because it looks like uh, uh because of decision what uh, finland did uh to join nato it encouraged it, it encouraged uh, sweden to change their opinion because they will not be in um, case if there will be war between russia and nato they will be not on the front line and uh, because we know that Finland was uh, neutral for during decades and uh, Finland quite uh, has an uh, interesting uh, story, history behind uh, with uh, Soviet Russia and not only but Imperial Russia, so with Russia itself, that's why, yeah, they were like uh, a little bit uh, um, careful about their journey into NATO because we remember that uh, there was uh, uh, Finland uh, was part of uh, Russian Empire one time, and uh, uh, there was a Finland Russian war. And uh, right now you can find a lot of interesting uh, movies which they're showing in Finland, and this movie is uh, showing uh, it is uh, war movies and like wow. Uh, for me it's for Russian and uh, to you know maybe that I have 25 percent of uh, DNA by I ancestor like I'm a quarter Finnish guy and uh, it is interesting for me that's why it is kind of interesting to uh, listen these uh, inter like uh, decisions and what is happening inside of these countries and outside why they do these such, such decisions yes i like i like this lecture so far and uh, it's left maybe 15 minutes for this lecture and uh, uh today i already can tell that i've gained a lot of things about sweden itself in future, obviously, we will watch more lectures about Finland, uh, about any country, including Finland. Uh, and yes, it is really fascinating. Gosh, it is so cool. <laughs> I want to tell you to find something new. Yes. Georg, yeah, unmute yourself. You're mute. We don't hear you. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot about it. Uh, Georg from EDM Info. I have an economic question uh, concerning electricity price, uh, energy prices. Uh, Sweden has a, a very large share of renewable energy. However, uh, according to the European Merit Order, uh, always the most expensive uh, way of production uh, is dictated. Let's check his uh, words, renewable uh, energy in Sweden, because I like, of course, experts uh, like uh, a lot to listen to their opinion but uh it's better always be it is one of the side of uh, uh 
um, political science and political scientists they need always to check information and we will use just Google for this um, renewable um, well, energy oh well energy in Sweden just by percentage uh, renew I did mistakes in percentage in person Sweden leads, we can see this information on the screen, uh, among EU countries with nearly two-thirds, 66% of its gross final energy consumption in 22 and derived from renewable sources. Okay. Sweden relied primarily on hydro, wind, solid and liquid uh, biofuels, as well as heat pumps. Statistic, you can see this in the European Union, and uh, it is uh, helpful. We can see these pictures in big on big screen, and we can see overall share of energy from renewable sources that Sweden, of course, uh, on the top uh, compared to other countries. Example. Um, Yes. Yes. On, on the second place, we can see Finland. Second place, it is Finland. Wow. Quite interesting information. Quite interesting information. Just and yeah. Okay. Creating the price uh, of this gas. Uh, so, how is Sweden handling this situation? Um, also, concerning uh, the elections uh, coming up. Uh, is that an issue? Thank you. Thank you. We, who would like to respond? I can start. I'm not an expert on, on the electricity policies, uh, the, the present day and, and the pricing system. I know that there is a debate going on. And, and in particular, since the pricing system differs a lot uh, throughout the, the large country, I think you said that uh, Sweden is the third largest country in relation to its territory of the European Union. But of course, in, in the political debate, there is a discussion about which kind of energy uh, Sweden should um, kind of use and produce and invest in. And now there is a debate on nuclear power, if there should, because Sweden also has uh, decided on closing uh, nuclear power plants and not to build new. And that debate is has started again from the, the center right uh, parties that they would like to invest in more nuclear power and then wind power obviously is a very sensitive issue for many of parties uh, we have a long coastal line with a lot of wind and there are many uh, enterprises some of them china sponsor that would like to build uh, kind of wind power plants but there is um, i mean not in my there is a lot of not in my backyard policies in particular in municipalities where these companies would like to build their windmills. So I think there is... Yes, a... I, I've heard uh, this many times that China invests in a lot in uh, some um, countries uh, to build, uh, example, a different in infrastructure and uh, including uh, investing in renewable energy in uh, some, um, example, transportation, um, like infrastructure and yes it is a, a very um, interesting thing that uh, they invest in a lot of countries including africa and etc etc and uh, here we can see she's talking about also uh, sweden that uh, they want to cooperate uh, as i understand uh, she said at least uh, with china to build this renewable renewable uh, uh, infrastructure like yeah. uh, uh, an ongoing debate but it's it, the, the political parties are torn between uh, their kind of climate uh, uh, kind of goals and reducing uh, CAOs and also with kind of, of the public op opinion on 
what kind of energy they would like to to have and prefer and of course the investments i mean building nuclear power plants given against the background of the finnish and french experience is it's it's not that uh, cheap it's expensive and it yeah. can take a long time and it depends yeah. on who builds them and and so on to what kind you have international interests involved in that patrick would you like to add and the chinese advertisement well uh, what i could add is that on in the swedish energy market it's divided into four different markets with different pricing and what you have is that you have uh, uh, lacking uh, the 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 capacity to send electricity over these markets uh, and that uh, in combination with connecting with the european market has made a huge difference between up north and, and south of Sweden, where south of Sweden have basically European continental um, electricity prices, uh, and and the top of Sweden have had uh, really, 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 really low prices because there mm -hmm. you have the, the uh, water plants and uh, windmills and so on, uh, and this is really uh, the big debate in in especially anything south of, of Sundsvall uh, is a big debate about the electricity bills and uh, you have seen different proposals the left party for example have had the most populist uh, um, uh, approach saying that Sweden should not export uh, uh, electricity and, and cut off from the European market um, in order uh, pretty often in the Russian propaganda you can find uh, some videos when they are talking about how dependent uh, uh, European countries on um, Russian energy, oil, gas. Uh, I want to tell, of course, uh, some countries dependent, but here we can see on example with uh, Sweden that uh, it is not like this. Yes, it... Uh, it is important for them, if I'm correct, but uh, we can see that uh, the most important part for Sweden it is obviously, even if we look uh, on the statistics, 66% it is a lot, like a lot, it is uh, like it is a renewable energy. Uh, yeah, nice to see this uh, information. I mean, uh, um, I believe that this policy was uh, for during decades, so uh, such picture cannot appear just by itself, like it is a uh, policy of uh, country itself, because uh, I believe it is also about security uh, of Sweden, because uh, like it is about national security when you are independent, when you are living on the north, oh, it is quite important to have such uh, to rely on yourself in uh, energy that's why i believe uh, this policy was uh, continuous for during decades yeah it is very interesting to find out yep to, to safeguard lower prices so there you see yeah. some kind of isolationistic approaches but uh, that is a very margin uh, party in, in the debate uh, but somehow remodeling the whole energy market is something that is a debate in the whole of Europe right now and I assume that we will see huge changes yeah. in the European energy market for sure the, the month to come in order to, to it's already happening to the Russian energy warfare against yeah. us thank you any other questions or we have a, a few minutes left I have two uh, questions uh, unless someone is uh, one is for Patrick you mentioned, Patrick, earlier, and you're a journalist, uh, that the alternative media uh, is dominated by uh, Swedish uh, Democrats and uh, pro-Russian stance, let's put it this way. Mm. Uh, is Sweden successful in uh, fighting uh, fake news, misinformation, etc.? And if so, how come? What is the, uh, you know, uh, what is the secret of the success? Well, I wouldn't say that Sweden is successful in this, uh, but uh, we have some general advantages. We have uh, 
a, a large media literacy, uh, we have a high trust society, and we have uh, um, well-established media with high trust. Uh, so these are, are factors that are, are good, but if you look at it um, somewhere between, uh, if I remember the figures correctly now from a Reuters Institute report, I think it's around one-fifth of the audience is frequently uh, using alter alternative media. And, and you can fifth. see basically also that one-fifth of fifth. the population votes for the Sweden Democrats. Uh, and and uh, this creates, of course, um, two different uh, uh, versions of, of reality. One reality that, that uh, Anne Katrin and I am living in, and, uh, and the other reality where uh, where climate change is, is basically a hoax or, or largely overstated, uh, where uh, Russia is treated unfair, um, where uh, restrictions against COVID is, is uh, uh, abused from mm. government or, or perhaps instigated by big pharma, etc., etc., etc. And mm, this yeah. division is problematic. Uh, I would argue. Yeah, it is very interesting to listen his opinion about uh, uh, Russian propaganda, how Sweden reacting on this, because obviously, uh, uh, as uh, if we will believe his words, and uh, uh, he said that Sweden uh, may be not winning this uh, um, propaganda, but uh, um, definitely trust society trust and uh, established uh, media in uh, sweden and stuff like this i mean like all these factors it is um, huge reasonable uh but uh, again i know that russian propaganda kind of strong it is for sure it is very strong uh if we will talk about such a small country as sweden of course uh it is important, uh, like it is a very, that's why I'm understanding why this question is here, because you can find um, a lot of uh, videos on YouTube, uh, not only on YouTube, on different uh, social medias, where they're talking about uh, how countries in Europe cannot, it is also, prop it's about propaganda, they, how they survive, Win and n maybe not surviving without Russian gas. Of course, it is like <laughs> some of them really ridiculous. <laughs> but uh, people uh, uh, sometimes uh, can believe on anything. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is very interesting to hear this answer. Thank you. And for Catherine, I have another yeah. question. I introduced you as an expert in uh, far right, but uh, after listening to you, you will soon be, or you already are, an expert in center politics, because uh, what you initially uh, researched is now becoming mainstream, or let's say an expert in mainstream politics. Um. Uh, sure, I mean, that's what has been going on all over uh, Europe, <laughs> that center-right parties have adapted to the radical-right parties. and. Of course, <laughs> I know what is happening. I mean, like, it's obvious that uh, you can find uncertainty. I mean, uh, all these far right and far left, uh, they're trying to gain more, more, how would say, uh, points from uh, people who is in between. That's what is happening when they're expressing their opinion. I mean, like, it is kind of general everywhere. It doesn't matter where, which country we are talking about, uh, uh, Russia, uh, Sweden, or you know, USA, Ukraine, everywhere, they're trying to find this balance between, because just to gain voters. Europe... Yeah. Uh many uh, when center-right parties get tired of being in opposition and they don't want to form cross-block uh, coalitions with social democratic parties that might require 
kind of heavy compromises, they include radical right parties in government. I mean, that has been the case in Austria, in Italy, in Denmark as a support party. And, and uh, that is, and, and in the Scandinavian countries, I mean, Norway, it's everywhere. Finland, uh, as well. And Sweden has been a latecomer in, in, in that respect. Um, many reasons for that. So what we see is that the conservative parties uh, have adopted both in terms of, of policy proposals, their rhetorics, but also the framing. I mean, when politicians talk about which are the problems in main problems in our societies and how should they be solved, they also have, have kind of borrow the framing of, of of the radical right parties and whether that is kind of a successful strategy or not that remains to be seen i mean if the hope is that they can you know weaken the radical right parties that doesn't seem to be the case uh, still the radical right parties are, are of course <laughs> alive and kicking yeah. uh, apart from denmark and uh, doing quite well uh, there are elections in Italy upcoming, and we have a really extreme radical right. I mean, Fratelli d'Italia that is doing competing with Lega for the voters. So I mean, it's becoming the new normal. Of the, the, <laughs> I the, like the, the radical, uh, the um, uh, well, not not uh, the abnormal is now the new normal in the European uh, debate and in the political landscapes. Thank you, thank Stefan. You. This is the last question. Stefan? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Um... Want to become an amazing... One moment. Creator. Fix presets. Plug it. We've been talking now on 90 minutes about Sweden, but we didn't mention the most prominent Swede, which, uh, who is uh, Greta Thunberg. And um, yeah. I would like to remind that, I was uh, I was awaiting these moments when uh, uh, they will talk about Greta Thunberg because she is uh, 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 famous, she's a celebrity around the world and uh, in some way people are looking at her um, on like um, what she's doing and uh, she was recently again as always arrested for some uh, your um yes one moment i need to change we, our live stream will be maybe less than 10 minutes i need to change battery one moment Yes. I hope this camera will join right now because I changed battery and uh, I know that you can hear me but uh, still I think that uh, yes uh, yeah it will join soon 
I believe this. And uh, I will continue to talk while uh, you cannot see me, but still. And uh, I see your message from uh, Jamie Dreams. Alex, you should take some such, such, sorry, such, sociology classes later. I think you would uh, like them. I think that it would be nice for me to take uh, different classes, including sociology ones, because it uh, looks like a pretty good thing. Yes, we I joined, as I promised to you. And yes, we have uh, uh, right now not so many minutes left and uh, from this uh, lecture. I like this lecture a lot. I didn't expect such huge variety of uh, questions. I mean, they were from different uh, angles. I like this theme a lot. And obviously it is helping me to understand a little bit better. Sociology. I say it's a social... <laughs> I say it a little bit different in my own way. Yes, let's change the uh, angle of our camera because, yeah. I was trying to change. And anyway, let's uh, talk, let's listen his opinion about Greta, uh, what he will tell about her, because she's um, kind of, um, she's famous around the world. You can find a lot of uh, um, news about her. Uh, and yeah, of obviously she's, uh, some people, uh, criticize you, some people not, it depends who you are, where you're from, etc. But um, let's listen his opinion about this. She actually started her um, school strike for climate uh, before the last uh, um, elections, the Swedish elections, and um, although it was um, a bit quiet around her in the last months, I heard that uh, she started new um, and new um, actions now before the, the elections. Um, how come that the climate change uh, issue is uh, on a so, such low profile in Sweden right now, despite of Greta Thunberg? Yeah. Thank you. So, well, it it's nice to see. Excellent sorry. question. Sorry, sorry, Hank Kaplin. No, Patrick, so, you start. Oh, I think it's an excellent question. How is it um, There is one saying that I'm, I'm trying to translate now. Uh, but uh, stating that you, you will not be prophet in your own home village is the Swedish saying. Uh, and I guess that is one fact. Um, and, and the other, uh, I would say that uh, uh, still um, this issue has been, been uh, a lot in media for, for several years. And I'm, I'm now only guessing, but I think it might be some kind of fatigue and 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 perhaps despair, uh, and and it's still not uh, not concrete. It should be a, a much larger issue, especially when we see uh, now in Europe uh, uh, the worst drought for 500 years uh, and the consequences that brings, and and the consequences will be much more grave. The, the years to come when you combine the climate change, security challenges and so on and so on. Yeah. But that's another discussion. Um, yeah, I could, I could add to that, that, that indeed, I mean, Greece, after the pandemic, I mean, Greta Thunberg has not been uh, a high profile person in uh, the Swedish public debate or in, in the society and not during this electoral uh, campaign. And the climate, the issue of the climate has not been a, a high uh, profile uh, question. And I mean, it's, it's surprising. And what we see in general, young, because there were young people who were supporting uh, Greta. And what we have seen a change that young people in Sweden today, they have become more conservative. The conservative party is the largest party among uh, the, the Swedish uh, young people of today, which is quite a surprising. I, as a political scientist, I wouldn't use the term polarization, but we see that there is a division. We have young people who are concerned about the, the environment and others who are concerned about more conservative issues like immigration. And the environmental party, have they have had a very active youth um, uh, association, mm -hmm. the Green Party, uh, but 
they are losing members and they are not that active. So we see kind of a attitudinal change among young people. And yeah. on a personal note, I think uh, as a political scientist and, and believing in politics, I think it's kind of kind of sad that that I know that it's it's a successful strategy to be kind of of forming an opinion outside of politics, but they have also be kind of anti-political in their um, message. And I think I mean uh, in in that we're not dealing with politics. And if you want to change, you have to engage in 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 politics. And and um, so I think it's sad they haven't done it because it would be a very important voice in, in the political debate and the environmental party has not been successful in mobilizing yeah. the, those young people who were doing the sitting strikes with Greta and were engaged in, in, in that kind of yeah. uh, movement. And, Engaging and it is like an uh, important part of everything. If you want to change something, you need to engage. And uh, but uh, at first, um, uh, for engaging, you need to have uh, um, knowledge uh, before engaging. To do like, come on, I mean, like, uh, yeah, I got your message. I got your message. Okay. Government for a long time, uh, they left the government in in uh, last year, but uh, they have taken a lot of uh, uh, beating and, and uncomfortable decisions uh, also in regarding to, to their core core interest. Uh, and I think that also plays in. Yes. I think, uh, I'm Catherine, I thank Patrick. Uh, you have raised so many issues and I'm sure we shall continue discussing these topics, uh, many of the topics you have mentioned yeah. for a long time to come. Before I give the last word to, uh, Sabine, I would just like to announce that on the 15th of September at, from 9 to uh, 10... Yeah, it is already ending of live stream. That's what they're doing. They're ending live stream. Ending. And um, for me, this live stream was insanely useful to watch uh, this um, lecture. As I promised to myself that I will do more often such live streams where I will try to understand a little bit better what people are doing, how people think in other uh, countries, uh, not only democratic but also in uh, authoritarian in, in different countries. We will try to watch sometimes such lectures. It is enjoyable, let's be honest, uh, try to understand everything it is giving you uh, diversity in um, like a diversity opinion can can help you a lot in my situation it is so useful I looked in Houston University of Houston program where you can find a lot of like interesting topics and sometimes I will watch uh, I will use this program as um, for doing live streams I will uh, look at these programs and try to understand a little bit better about uh, all this stuff because it is really really exciting in uh, summary in conclusion what uh, we watch today we watch today amazing lecture about elections in sweden external and uh, internal security challenges uh, it was it was useful it was really useful to find out that uh, all these um, all these um, results about uh, elections in 2022 which had sweden it was just interesting to listen really interesting and uh, yeah i like this i like this a lot um yeah and uh, as um next live stream will be probably on uh, when it will be today which day i already forget on saturday Yes, where we will talk about, uh, you will find out. It will be at 6 p.m., I believe, on Saturday. Yeah, on Saturday it will be. And yeah, uh, thank you, all of you. Uh, you can give your suggestions which topic I should watch about. Uh, in future, there will be more. I have uh, priorities right now. I want to look you know, about Singapore elections and uh, their system lecture about like this, uh, about India, I want to find out a little bit more, about Germany, about France, about... Uh, uh, Yes, about many countries. Anyway, thank you all of you for your support. You're amazing. If you was watching all these lectures, it was like I 
I'm shocked because uh, I'm, yeah, I'm really shocked. But yes, thank you for your time. I'm wishing you all of the best. You are enough. You are wonderful. Uh, I believe in you. And uh, I'm hugging you. And as always, see you next. Ah, I want to see about Hong Kong. Why not? One day we will watch about Hong Kong. Thank you, Jamie Dreams, for your suggestion. Hong Kong. But at this moment, I wish you all of the best. And see you next time.